Hi, my name's Susan Waters, and uh, we're here for a great filmmaker Q&A with Thomas Verrett, and he's the director for Zero Gravity. And Thomas, welcome. We're really happy to have you and your film here at the Friday Harbor Film Festival. So um, happy to have you here. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for, for having me and uh, supporting, supporting Zero Gravity. Uh, it's, you know, it's great to be here. Well, I got to tell you, this film for me was particularly exciting. Um, as an educator, uh, many, many, many moons ago, I was actually the first director for uh, 21st century after school programs in um, Clark County School District in Las Vegas, Nevada. So we did a lot of the similar types of things that we're seeing highlighted in this film. And it, it's just so great. I'm, I was just thrilled to see um, this type of thing um, promoted in the film. So it, it was great. It was sort of a walk down memory lane for me to see the excitement on teachers and kids' faces in doing this type of thing. Oh, yeah. I, thank you for saying that. I mean, um, you know, I have no real experience in education. So this was all uh, very new for me, the, the process of, uh, well, obviously making the documentary that with like, you know, the students and, and teachers and everything, but but also kind of understanding how important uh, it really is to engage, um, you know, outside the bell even, and 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 to know that the film is uh, working, uh, you know, for educators in particular and students uh, even more so really um, is, you know, a huge, huge honor for, for me um, because that's, you know, what inspired me to, to make it really was being in that room and seeing education done well, essentially. Um, I feel like there's a lot of, there's a lot of media and movies even out there that, you know, everything's always about, um, you know, like what's wrong um, with the world always. And, and this was a film that kind of came out really through the pandemic and like a very troubling time for uh, all of us, of course. And so, you know, but I just couldn't let go of the, the, experience of what watching those kids kind of do that stuff and code satellites in space and just like what it actually represents and means um was so hopeful to me that that i like kind of didn't have a, a choice i sort of just had to go through and 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 finish this this uh you know passion project of mine that's been kind of four years in the making i guess well that, it, yeah I, I was going to ask you how the idea for making this film came about um, so there's, well, uh, my, my executive producer, he had, uh, the connection to MIT and, and knew somebody at the zero robotics program and, um, and introduced me and it was a pretty quick turnaround. It was like, can we do something with this? We, we, uh, you know, we think there's, there might be a story to tell, uh, about students coding satellites in space. And of course, for me, when I heard that, I was like, what? are you like serious? And, uh, and so I, uh, kind of got a little mini crew together and we went to the orientation, which is what you see in the beginning of the movie. And that was, you know, when all the teachers and everybody's, uh, you know, kind of like a little, uh, just struck with the mission of coding a GPS system around Mars and they're kind of all blank and like, is this, are, are we in reality right now? Um, that was kind of how, I felt a little bit behind the camera at that moment too, because we were sort of doing this, this download, uh, you know, into the details with everyone uh, as it was going. So uh, that was how, that was how the idea kind of um, came about. But for me personally, you know, I've just always been a, a huge uh, fan of space and science and, and, and just, I love thinking about, you know, where we come from and, uh, you know, why we're here and how massive the universe is. And, um, you know, Apollo 13 was like kind of one of my favorite movies when I was young. And, and, uh, like, so the idea of just doing a space movie is also part, partially what, what really propelled me, uh, to, to kind of dive in and, and see if we can make something out of this, uh, you know, incredible program, uh, that, that they provide for, cause you know, this, the film is, Obviously, you know, it focuses on three students and, and a teacher in one class uh, primarily. But, you know, there's thousands of kids across the country that are doing this stuff year in and year out. And um, it's just an amazing, like, kind of program, I think, to see that 
kind of access and, um, you know, uh, you know, trying to promote STEM and, and where we're going in the future and, and give everyone uh, the best opportunities they really can. So I just fell in love with, with all of it really um, as, as it went on as in particular. Yeah, it, it's really exciting for the kids. It, it, it's life changing. It can really set them on a on a trajectory for for their entire lives and what they're going to do with their futures. So, how did you come to choose Campbell Middle School? Uh, well, so that really all all stemmed from that orientation, as I mentioned. And my thought was, if I could find a educator who kind of gave me the same sensation that I had or that I, re that I remembered when I was young and just, you know, I would be fascinated by a subject, not necessarily because I was interested into it, but because the passion was there behind the educator and that would get me like excited or more interested in it than I would have been, you know, um, just reading something in a book, I suppose. Like I was looking for um, uh, just an educator that, that had uh, passion behind them and you know a personality i suppose it, it, and and tanner was uh like he you know he gave me a bunch of like we, i interviewed him early on and and you know he told me about like what his where his passions came from or uh, from his grandfather and things like that and i just had a you know these were things that you that you kind of just trust your gut a little bit at a, at a certain point i didn't know who the students would be in his class when i chose to follow uh Tanner, really, it was it was kind of a gut reaction to uh, to just seeing how everybody reacted in that program uh, in the in the orientation. I mean, and I wasn't as concerned with trying to find the winning team as much as finding a, a story that I thought would be engaging. And Tanner being um, never having coded really before and particularly even taught uh, a class about it. <laughs> Uh, was something that I also thought was fascinating, and and it was it was a little bit of a shot in the dark to see where it would go, and of course uh, it obviously worked out. And there's a movie now about <laughs> about that that experience and that journey that they all took together. But it really was um, just kind of getting to know somebody and trusting your gut to see uh, where where that journey might take you. Yeah, Tanner just exemplifies um, what it should be to to be a teacher. And um, it, yeah, it was fun to watch him sort of his growth and his journey too. It wasn't just with the kids. So um, you mentioned it, it took you quite a few years at, to, to complete this film. What, what year did you start filming and, and how long did it take you to complete? Uh, well, so we shot the film uh, primarily in 2017. And part of the reason why uh, it took so long was I was in the middle of another uh, I was producing a World Cup series called Phenoms with uh, Fox Sports, and that was like kind of the priority at that time. And that that it was a, a twenty episode series that we shot around the world, and it was um, it was a three year project. So the zero gravity shoot kind of happened like you know a couple of like basically through that summer, and the and then I, I uh, it, originally the idea was let's see if we can maybe use this as a, um, as a, like make a short film that might be a proof of concept to develop a series perhaps, uh, because there's also a high school competition that's worldwide. And, um, and that was originally where the, the idea kind of, um, came from, but of course I had this other project that I had to complete and, uh, um, and then there's also money <laughs> that, that gets involved in. So, uh, what ended up happening is that when the pandemic shut everything down, um that was sort of where i um kind of found the confidence i suppose to to really pursue um finishing this this film that i had started uh kind of years years earlier and um and then of course you know going through that experience uh in covid where you know just the entire post production of the film not being able to you know, be in the same room as your composer or your, your colorist or, you know, I think it was just a, it, everything took a lot longer too, just because of things like that as well. But the, the real reason was just because I was busy and this was a person, personal uh, passion project of mine. I didn't have like, you know, any like real money behind this film. It was mostly like done by like self-finance, honestly. So 
that that has a lot to do with with uh, why it took so long, and um, and also it's very rewarding to to kind of be part of of your festival and and playing and having people enjoy it now because again it was just like a gut feeling that I had that I sort of had to kind of go and complete. Um, I you know it was an experience that I never forgot and um, and it always just kind of pained me that it was on the shelf still <laughs> in a way too. Well, I think it's, it's kind of cool at, at, at the end of the film where we sort of get to catch up with um, a little bit more grown up versions of, of the students that you were um, working with. So that was really interesting. And one of the things I think um, post-production that's kind of struck me, um, I mean, I just I think the editing in this film was just masterful it, it, because there's so much going on and there's so much footage that you're using um, from various places, including, uh, you know, historical footage and footage from NASA. So I, I just can't even imagine it must have been a Herculean task to to, you know, take on the editing and and get this film into the beautiful final project that that it is. Can you tell us a little bit about about that process? Yeah, uh, no, I appreciate that because, um, you know, I started my career as actually as an editor. Um, and um, well, like when I moved to L.A., like, not, like nothing but my car, you know, I mean, like I kind of decided early on that uh, editing I thought would be a good path for me because I could get, I could learn a lot from other directors and how they shot things and how they thought about things and even how they dealt with notes and all that, all that kind of stuff. So that uh, that over time led to uh, my confidence, uh, you know, continuing and working on other projects. And, and then this one, um, in particular, yeah, it was a big task. I mean, a documentary is always difficult because you're, you don't have a script, right. Um, and so you're kind of writing the film as your as the editor. Um, and one of the things that, um, that like, you know, I, my process was, let me see if I can isolate where the the um, the moments are in in you know the days of footage that we shot, and um, and then I always knew that I was going to intercut um, material from NASA and you know like historical footage that that sort of laid the foundation uh, to how important the the idea of what they're doing really is, and sort of laying the found foundation of of what had to have happened in order for something like this to even be possible. Um, and then it really just came down to refining it and finding out like the pacing and the threads that, um, that really take you through it. Uh, but it was always, it was always um, like the idea of, of having all these threads was, was part of the foundation of the film even from the beginning, but obviously doing that <laughs> uh, alone <laughs> in particular, uh, you know, without without a, like a uh, you know a producer or other writers like kind of helping you out was it it absolutely um, made the process uh, more difficult. But at the same time, it's part of the fun too. I mean, diving into these kinds of things and seeing where the story can take you and where you can take it sometimes is part of um, you know it's it's sometimes it could be uh, like those happy accidents happen some like from through through like explore, exploration and. Uh, yeah. You know, not everything is is um, planned out in the beginning. <laughs> you know, sometimes it really does take a life of its own uh, once you sit down and, and start to kind of craft the whole film. And then, you know, as far as like um, like the running time, it's at 75 minutes, it's um, I think it's pretty like well paced and concise. Um, I never had a running time I was really shooting for. Actually, I just kind of wanted the film to tell me. <laughs> as much as possible like when, when do we need to pick up the pace and and when can we slow down and and you know how how um how much uh you know of the story do we really need to know to to understand this journey so it was a long road though for sure i mean and um in particular you know i i my girlfriend and a, and a couple other of my friends and family like they've seen a thousand edits of this movie so uh you know <laughs> we we rely on on the the people that can't get rid of us sometimes <laughs> to, to yeah. get us through it. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, it's just a great job. I, I think 
it, I, I was just really struck by how much material you you must have had just in raw footage to you know to distill down to to tell the story. Um, and there's a part of a um, part in the film where I and I can't remember who is is speaking about it. And they they talk about coding as a universal language, which really struck me um, in that. It was an interesting parallel with the diversity of the students that were working on this project and how they were all working together um, and the backstories. I mean, was that surprising? Obviously, you didn't have any um, any pre, you, you didn't screen the kids going in. So was that the backstories? It really became a, a, a a heart of the movie too. Um, was that a surprising element to you? Um, that's a good question. I think that uh, in a way, everything is surprising. <laughs> I mean, um, like for instance, Tanner and his granddad, uh, I knew that Tanner's inspiration came from his granddad, but I had no idea that his granddad uh, worked on parts for the space station uh, until we like kind of shot that sequence. So uh, there was, you know, there was things like that that happened as well as like, you know, with the, with the kids and their backstories. Um, I did know, uh, uh, you know, by, before we shot, of course, um, their, their stories. Cause you know, I had to, um, you know, kind of gain their trust and then gain their family's trust, uh, to, to sort of explain what I'm trying to do with this film and, and why I want to kind of go in and, and, you know, get more personal than, than what the mission of the program really was, because my, my theory was, um, we have to, we have to love the people that were, that are going through this journey. Um, and, and, uh, that, you know, that heart and that foundation of like the, those kind of personal, uh, sacrifices and, and troubles to, to overcome are part of a, of any journey, but in, in the context of, of zero gravity with space and how far they're reaching, it just felt like a natural place to go um, and was always something that I thought was necessary. Um, what I didn't anticipate actually was the three uh, kids that we followed all necessarily being uh, like such, so affected by the experience throughout the, the, uh, the entire summer. I'm, I mean, when I started, I was like, well, what if one of the kids that I love like doesn't show up to the finals because they're sick that day or something, you know, like then there's no movie. I mean, like, so the, a lot of, there was always um, a, like a production aspect of it as well too, just being like, well, how do we, you know, we've already put in like so much time and effort and so is everybody else. Like, let's make sure that, that we can tell this story somehow too. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, that's all that's, I could talk about all of that for, you know, for ages. I mean, they, the, everyone was, was, really inviting and and very kind and um and i loved like that that they were able to to uh share um some of their pasts and how they got to where they are and um because that's what kind of grounds the whole film it's what um allows us to relate and when we're talking about the universal coding idea and how well those kids like work together no matter like where they're they're from or or their ethnic backgrounds or I, I mean that was just a beautiful thing to see I I mean that like in, in a way that's what this movie to me represents and zero gravity as a title really comes from from that idea um, you know it's sort of like reaching for the stars together uh, to do amazing things and of course when you know the astronauts look back on the Earth and they talk about the overview effect you know there is no borders and um, you know, it's just a fragile marble in the, and like a sea of blackness. And so, um, all of that, I think really, uh, ties in together and was absolutely intentional and part of, of why I wanted to make the movie, because that's the future I kind of want to see. Well, it, it's a beautiful film and it really does touch on so many important topics. And I really, I also appreciate that it makes a compelling argument for, supporting and expanding access to STEM and STEAM programs for young people. Um, I think it's so, so important um, for our future, for all of our futures. Um, and, you know, a plug for after school programs in that case too, it's kind of near and dear to my heart. Um, 
But there was one comment in the film too that I thought was really worth reflecting on where uh, the mention was that uh, humans have been living and working in space for as long as those students had been alive. And I thought that really kind of set me back for a second. I thought, wow, that that's kind of an amazing thing. And it's amazing to think about what these students through this experience and and their future experiences, you know, where that's going to take them and where they're going to take us um, in the future, too. So, uh, you know, kudos, because it, it was just really some real great things all tied in together in one beautiful film. Thank you so much. Yeah, I, I, I really I appreciate you um, recognizing that little tiny line because it's in the it's in the, um, you know, kind of the big uh final countdown sequence and um but you know i was always trying to add as much like little tiny pieces of um of history or just information that i thought was really just mind-blowing like the idea that that yeah like continuously those uh there's been somebody working in space uh without a break you know while uh, for as long as those kids have been um are here and you know since they've been born that it just it, it immediately, at least to me, makes me think, well, where are we going to go next? How obviously, we're, um, you know, currently there's a lot of um, contracts being paid with NASA and going back to the moon and Mars between the corporate space industry and things like that. And it's just very clear that uh, if we don't um, allow uh, our students the opportunity to to engage with where we're going in, in the future and, uh, you know, it's it's like like stem is is where we're headed I, I found filmmaking as about the same age as the kids in the movie so there's a very uh like uh direct connection to me with um how important it is to to um i guess allow or give give kids an opportunity to um to find their passions at a, at a young age too i mean not everybody's gonna go through that program and love it you know but it might set them off on a path or maybe make them think differently about something that they wouldn't have done otherwise. And that I think is really the essential value of it all and why it's so, or why it needs to be uh, as accessible as it is and why we need to continue to, uh, to work towards those ends. Yeah. And I think that's great. And your film highlights that in a way that if people maybe aren't, um, you know, too knowledgeable about these types of programs and, and what they can do for kids it it can help uh, open people's eyes to the importance of those types of things. And I've got to say, um, I would be remiss if I didn't give a shout out to our own high school program here in Friday Harbor, Washington, because we have uh, the Friday Harbor High School aerospace team, and they have done some incredible things over the past few years. In 2018, they went to the International Space Settlement Design Competition. They came in second. In 2019, they came in first. Um, in 2020, even through COVID and having to work in a remote environment rather than all together, they were still a part of the international competition. So, um, you know, we see that here in our own community too. And it's just such a gift for students to be able to have these types of programs. And it's, it's wonderful to have a beautiful film that highlights what this can do for students. So I thank you for that. That's awesome. Thank you. Um, and, you know, kudos to to the high school teams. It sounds fascinating. You know, I'm kind of, um, I guess one thing I wanted to mention as well, just for, for you know, the viewers is that the, um, the Zero Revised program as well is, is free. It just takes a teacher to sign up for it and kind of go through the learning orientation uh, to, you know, so that they can kind of return to their classroom and and be able to to kind of guide, uh, you know, through through the whole thing. Um, but that's also part of what I thought was so fascinating was that it didn't cost any money to 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 join. So any anybody um, that might be just some, you know, in that uh, in the right place at the right time at least could find find out about it if if nothing else. Um, and uh, yeah, thank you very much for for recognizing the. The importance of the of, of what we're trying to do with this movie and and why 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 uh there's so much uh passion and need not even just for me just like from tons of of stem organizations out there to to really kind of 
bring this education level um, to where it needs to be. So what are you working on now? Do you have any new projects in the works? Um, I do. I'm, uh, I'm writing a, uh, another science focused, uh, story. It's called, uh, dark matter tentatively. And it's not a documentary though. It's a, it's more of a psychological thriller. And, uh, but I haven't gotten that far uh, along on it recently, <laughs> uh, because we've been doing all the, all the zero gravity, uh, stuff. And, and I was, you know, in all honesty, a little unprepared for kind of how demanding, <laughs> I think some of this really uh, was uh, or is becoming in a way. It's like a, another, you know, it's it's just almost as, as uh, busy and demanding as making the film in its own weird way, uh, but very different, you know. We're, um, so uh, hopefully, you know, maybe a, around the beginning of the new year, uh, that next project can can start laying some tracks to, to get off the ground. Well, we can't wait to see what you do next. And hopefully you'll come, we'll circle back around for documentary so we can have you back at the Friday Harbor Film Festival in a, a future year too. Yeah, um, I will, I'll always go back to documentaries. I think it's just that there, it's such a, um, it's such a massive amount of uh, effort that's so different and demanding to a narrative. And I started a narrative uh, and in the last five years I've kind of been dealing with documentaries or maybe six. And so, I, I kind of feel, I'm feeling a little bit of a of a let's go let's go just make a film that's that we could script and just shoot what we need <laughs> and then edit it and be done and then and then I'll find the the you know that's the idea we'll see I mean you know your your high school kids uh, you know STEM program that sounds like a fascinating story maybe there's some documentary there you go come on come on down love to have it. <laughs> Um, so it's, all, it's all it's all a little nebulous at the moment. We're just, you know trying. Well, and you never know, you know, from one moment to the next, what idea will come around, or you know, what what new exciting thing might just fall in your lap to do something with. So, um, you know, that's always that's kind of the fun thing about it. It can be serendipitous at times, but um, absolutely. To yeah. circle back to the film, though, I I we're getting ready to wrap up our time together. And I'd like to know what you would hope that um, audiences would uh, learn or take away from zero gravity. Um, I, I think high level, I just want there to be some reminder on occasion that, um, that there's going to be a whole generation and really many generations uh, that inherit the, this world after we're gone really as adults. Um, and that, that was kind of the, the most profound part about uh, making the film for me. And I hope that that comes across uh, when people watch it because um, I don't have kids of my own. And so to see how, um, how fast they, they grew in front of my eyes that summer was, um, it was, it, you know, it's it's not even. I mean, it's hard to even represent in the in the film compared to like what it was like to see in person. So that uh, just the the fact that that we have a um, sort of an obligation to to prepare the next generation uh, for to you know kind of build a bridge to a brighter future essentially is really what I want to to be conveyed out of this film. And outside of that, it's just showcasing how important. Um, you know, working together and collaboration is and, and inclusion and, and what can be done with uh, the human spirit, really. I think all those ideas, I mean, it's a, it, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of themes in the film, but, you know, it, it touches on legacies, it touches on, on um, you know, individuality and, and collectiveness um, and also just humanity, really. So it's, it's meant to, to provoke those thoughts and, and hopefully inspire some students even uh, to that maybe haven't done STEM, but might be interested in it. Um, I really think that the one value that the film has that maybe a program doesn't is that it's something that somebody can just watch that they might not have access to a STEM program and, and may be interested in, in pursuing that path. I mean, that, that would, uh, to me, if, if that turns around and, and, you know, couple of decades and there's some students that find me some, somewhere and say, Hey, I saw your film and now I'm, now I'm, I'm doing this stuff. Um, I mean, that would, 
that would be everything really. So, yeah, <laughs> I guess that's a long answer. Yeah. But <laughs> no, no. Yeah, for sure. No, that's, um, I, I think that it is an opportunity for uh, to introduce a lot of different um, topics and a lot of different themes to to different people, both young people and and adults. And um, and, and I will mention also that um, we have a, a wonderful, um, I guess I'll call her a benefactor here on the island who has always supported um, the ability for students to see films in our in our uh, festival and this year a little different because we were all virtual but zero gravity was one of the four films that were chosen to be um, provided um, for free access for all students in the k-12 system here so yay yeah that's students, awesome students are there tell them tell them to reach out to me i would love to hear their feedback and reviews and and comments uh and uh, I guess to that note, uh, for anybody else watching, you know, just to, uh, you know, we're like kind of a small movie that could. And, and so all of the support that, that comes, um, we're incredibly grateful for. But uh, also, you know, try to engage with our socials. That it's um, at Zero Gravity Doc, D-O-C, as in documentary, at Zero Gravity Doc on Twitter, Facebook and, and Instagram. And, and that's also um, our website, too. So, um but yeah, that's amazing to hear. And, you know, the, we've had a couple of student reviews come back, um, like from te some test screenings that we did as well. And, and they're phenomenal. So, um, I, I would love to, to engage, uh, more with, with your students who had access to the film. Absolutely. Absolutely. We'll, we'll try to make that happen. Well, Thomas, we're about out of time here. It's just been a pleasure chatting with you and, uh, can't wait to see what you're going to do next. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. I appreciate it. Thank you so much.